Right, tonight's episode, I'm going to attempt to do a caliper rebuild on a rear R33, R32, well basically just a Skyline Sumitoa, I think, brake caliper, the ones with Nissan, they've probably all got Nissan, but these ones, one of these calipers. I did the other one as practice because it, it turned into a bit of a prick. And here we go, I've um, already removed all of these um, shimmy pieces from it and the brake pads and and that and I even ripped the outer boots off you should be able to figure out how to do that bit there are some other bits though that took me a while to figure out I would like to touch on one of the first was getting the pistons out that sucked I got my compressed air gun out and it didn't work initially, so I had to put a bit of um, vacuum hose on the outside of it, and now it gets a pretty good seal in there. And initially I got in there, and I thought, oh yeah, I'm going to be real clever, and I'll get this piece of silicon boot put in there, and I blew the pistons out. That's all well and good, except this side came out, and that side didn't. And I thought, well, what do I do now? So what I had to do, is I had to put that piston back in, and then clamp it off, and then blow the other side out, and then I'll show you what I did to get that side out again. So, start with the clamp, put it on here. And that will then hold that piston in place. Then grab ear protection because you're a pussy. Then stick compressed air into a hole and slowly out with a bang. Whoa, 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 actually put that rubber piece in there because it could suck otherwise. I probably don't look directly at it. Boom! Out it comes. Right, that's one side out. It's also the side that needs to come out first. The next step, I grabbed a piece of um, stainless steel TIG wire. You probably don't need to be stainless steel, but that seemed to be the most rigid wire I had, and I stuffed it up the hole for the brake line, then I pushed, okay it's not moving like that, maybe I went like this, the hammer, maybe, you know what, maybe it's stuck, the other side came out in that fashion, however, but this side is being a bit Oh, being a bit crap. So I'm going to have to free up the other piston with compressed air, then I'm going to have to put it back in, and then I'm going to have to go back through this process again. Got a piece of rubber on here so I don't scratch my mint paint job. Right, now I've got that held in place. I'll grab a pussy pad and blow the other piston. Now that the other piston's out, I have to clean it up a little bit. Yeah, there's actually galling around it. And that's what's stuck in there. So, I'll clean that off a bit. And stick it back in just a little bit. I'll blow this one back out again. Whoa! Now... 
bit of stainless wire, fingers crossed. bent inside there and I cannot get it out. Oh, there we go. Much success. Vice grip to win. Maybe disregard that piece of wire altogether. It did work on the other side though. Using a little hook, I shall remove the old seal from both sides. Goodbye. Goodbye. Then I'm going to have a look inside the bore on each side and remove, well I've spotted some little marks so I'm going to remove those now with some 1200 grit. Wet and dry. Okay, so I'm just, there's not much on there, just hitting it with the paper a little bit and we'll just ensure there's no high spots to catch and sort of reduce the breaking performance. So there's some little marks I can see. Not too bad, but still a good idea. Let's give it a little bit of a home with the 1200. So, next, I have a bit of a look at each one of the pistons. Give them a bit of a clean up. This one's got quite a bit of black crap on it. I'll clean it off with a wet and dry. That, no doubt, was getting it to be jammed in there. Again, it's only 1200 grit wet and dry to ensure that I'm not removing a lot of material. Hopefully just the high spots. With this caliper kit, it came with two different coloured greases. There's a red grease and there's a white grease. The red grease is a rubber grease. That is for lubricating the piston seal and the rubber boots that go on either side. The white grease is for lubricating the shims on the brake pads. I'm just going to cut the corner off. So I can pretend I'm icing a cake while I'm applying this grease and I'm going to just apply a little bit of rubber grease all the way around these seals. Beautiful. I'm going to slip a seal in each side. And there you go. Next. I like to take a little bit of this grease and apply it to the piston so it will go in easy and hopefully there's some lubricant on the dry side that doesn't have any brake fluid and that prevents some galling and if any moisture gets in it will help with that too. So go to both sides. Then I'm going to push the pistons in. Now it's important to not push them in too far to start with because otherwise it will be very hard to put the seal in. You can see there, that's approximately how far I like to push the pistons in. I don't like to go any further than that because it's too hard to get the seals on. Next, I take the seals and I pack the inside of them with grease. So then, I um, slip the seal over. And this is quite awkward, but I try and massage Oh, it's, it's going to be hard to show on camera, but I, I try and start at one corner and then um, get that over and then sort of work it around with my two thumbs until it pops on. There we go. So then that's now seated correctly to the other side. Oh, yeah, next. There are these rings. It hold the rubbers in place. So install them like so. Okay, so there's the two retainers in place. Okay, next I put back into place all of these like stainless steel bits, little shims that came off the bolts and that. Okay, so we've got a couple that go, and there's one that goes there, 
think. Yep. There's another one that goes in there. Forgot to put them on the other side, do that in a minute. Then we have the, I don't know what these are actually for, but they go in like so. And like so. Next, you grab your white grease, grab your brake pads. Now, open the packet of this white grease and on the brake pads I'll remove the shims like so. And the, the grease goes there and there on each one of these. So let's put a blob there and a blob there. Then install the factory shim back over the top of that. The thing is to stop squealing, probably not necessary at all, but that's what you meant to do with it. Next up, because as I said, I removed the coating from these pins, I want to put a bit of grease on those. By the way, this grease really stinks. You probably smell it on your hands for a couple of days afterwards. I definitely have. It's it's weird. I don't know. It kind of reminds me of Mergarine for some reason. I, 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 I don't know why. There. Start with one pin. Put it a bit of the way through. Grab a pad. And start it off. Grab the other pad. Make sure you put it in the right way. Drive the pin home. Then, there's this other aluminium, oh no, stainless steel piece. Sit that into place. Standard brake pad changer procedure. Slide the other pin in. Push that piece down. Through it goes. So now everything's in place apart from this clip. I like to put it in with that hook piece facing me, which is the Nissan part of the caliper. So I'll work with that. You can use a Phillips head screwdriver to help rotate these pins to get them in the right spot. And once they're in there, you can hook that over and click it into there. And there, there it is, a rebuilt Skyline R33, R32 rear brake caliper. Pads in, ready to put back on the car. Hope that was useful to someone. Did take me quite a while to figure out what that grease was for. So if anything, I hope that's helped someone out. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell down there, there, whatever. And, um, Please keep supporting the channel because I want to keep making videos and I want you to keep watching them and you know you want to keep watching them too. Cheers.